All right. Thank you so much for being here with me, Tosca, today. I really appreciate your time. Can you tell a little bit about your story? Like, how did you become an author of the Eat Clean Diet? And you're also a fitness model, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I have experienced many things in this uh, career path that I've been on for the last, um, well, 16 years practically. And uh, really, I came to this part of my life, the writing, the fitness aspect and everything, because I was very unfit. I was not the person you would pick to normally mm. write a book or write a New York Times bestselling book about wealth, health and wellness. So where did that put me? I was um, the mother of three children, 204 pounds, and wow. essentially unable to walk up the stairs of my house to kiss my kids goodnight. Um, wow. I was experiencing all of those symptoms that go along with uh, blood sugar dysregulations. So I was not diagnosed with diabetes type 2, but I was on my way there. And my father had passed from heart disease, and I was beginning to experience the palpitations and the short of breath symptoms that he had experienced. And I thought, good God, if I don't change something very soon, I am not going to live a long life. I'll die. I won't see my kids grow up. This has to change. And that's where it got me. Um, that was the very, very beginning, the, the big aha moment when I couldn't eat. How long ago was that? <laughs> that was uh, you know, 16 years ago. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, and then you, did you start, like, did you search for professional help or did you just go on the internet? How, how was that? I don't know, even 16 years ago, how you know, the internet was, but. Well, Bruno, I have to say that I did what probably most people do when they make up their mind that they want to lose weight. Because to me, being overweight like that, okay, that's where I begin. I have to lose weight. And so I tied on my running shoes and went to the gym, and I thought that I could run the weight off. And mm -hmm. as you and I both know, it takes a lot more than that to shape a body. Um, but I didn't know that. I was really operating from a place of ignorance. But we have a saying here that says – when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And that teacher appeared for me in the form of Robert Kennedy, who uh, I, was, I was teaching his daughter grade one. And Robert noticed me and said, you know, I think I must have shared something with him, like, you know, I'm trying to get my life back. I'm trying to get in shape, blah, blah, blah. And he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm running. And he said, ha, ha, ha. He really, he laughed in my face. <laughs> and then he said, 99% of people who tell me that story, and I didn't really know who he was, he said, they just never make it. And that was exactly what he had to say, because it was like waving the red flag in front of the bull. The one thing you never say to me is, you can't do it. So um, <laughs> I, I dug in. And when he saw that I was serious, he challenged me to uh, compete in a bodybuilding contest. And uh, that's what I did for the very first time in my life. I competed in a bodybuilding contest at the age of 42. And that process of about a year and a half from meeting him to competing taught me everything I needed to know about eating clean and training, shaping a body, motivation, dedication, and the piece that came from understanding how all those uh, puzzle pieces fit together. Yeah, it's so unfortunate. Like I see here, I'm in Brazil right now, and I see so many people just like jogging, running, running. And I try, I, I try to think and like, oh, are they running because they have pleasure or just because they're trying to lose weight? And I, I kind of like I want to stop and talk to them about a better options. Right. But my, my first question is like, why do you think so many people struggle with weight nowadays? Well, I think because uh, they, and I loved when you were introducing your initiative with your podcast, um, I, I, weight is not a one-stroke deal. Weight is a very complex issue, and we have to address it not just with pounds on the scale, watching the pounds decrease, but we have to do a number of things. We have to look at it as a a mental component, a psychological component, a physical component, and a nutrition component. And then you have to focus your energies in each of those directions in order to get results. But most people don't want to do that. Most people just look at the numbers on the scale and say, okay, I want to lose 10 pounds. And they do a whole bunch of silly things, like I did, to try to get rid of the weight. Not really putting an educated effort into 
making those changes. So Bruno, you have this, this amazing podcast. I do my work with eating clean and we address all the complex pieces that go together with wanting to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. I was on, on a website prior to this interview doing some research and something called my attention when you said that you should eat more, not less. And that's <laughs> what people think all the time, especially when they're trying to lose weight, they start to decreasing the amount of food and they start to increase the exercise, the yes. activity levels, because they want to try to burn more you yeah. know, and eat less. Mm. That's a lot, a lot of people follow this approach, but you said completely the opposite. <laughs> so how is that? that Explain to us. Well, uh, you, you cannot chase away the sins of your overeating, that chocolate cake you ate or the bag of potato chips or whatever by exercise alone. It, it, science is much more complicated than that within our body. Um, we need to think about weight loss from the point of view of changing our nutrition so that we can actually stoke the metabolic rate and we need to eat the right foods at the right frequency so eat clean nutrient dense properly prepared whole foods space those meals every two and a half to three hours apart and really stimulate the metabolic rate so that it's working in our favor to help us burn fat and that's the beauty of eating clean and then the other piece is of course doing the exercise because when we shape metabolically active muscle tissue we are creating that furnace within us because our, our muscles get uh, the flesh that is muscle burns calories at a rate three times faster than fat, right? Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. the science of it. It's beautiful and it works every time. Yeah, yeah. Got it. And I also think every time I hear that, I, I also think about you putting fuel on your car, for example. You yeah. want something that runs more than, you know, you want to put yeah. less Yes. Less uh, food on your body, on your car. So the same thing, you want to have more energy. So food is energy. You want to have more of those right. things. But we have to be very specific about the food choices we make. And, and I almost want to say that food is just a general term for the things we put in our mouth. But nutrition is very specific to our mm -hmm. weight loss goals. There's a big difference. You know, we, we won't be eating... Uh, cereals, breads, and chocolate chip cookies to lose weight, but we will be eating lean protein, complex carbohydrates, healthy fats. That will help mm. us lose weight. Is there something that you really like to avoid for you and for your clients that you are, oh, let's try to avoid those things as much as you can? <laughs> uh, every client I work with, and I'm working with a few in Hollywood right now who are getting ready for their uh, for the award season, um, yeah. I start every client the same way with a process called strike sugar. So what I do is I, I work with them for a period of four weeks to clear out the sugar that's in their diet. And everybody will say to me, oh, no, no, I don't eat sugar. But believe me, I find it. And it is in things that we don't even think it's in. Like, for example, in one cigarette is four teaspoons of sugar. It's also wow. in the most obvious things like um, sugar itself, sodas, fruit juices, yeah. uh, cereals, processed foods, packaged foods, right? So we work strictly on clearing all that out of the diet and replacing those sugary things with whole foods, clean foods. And that makes a very big difference. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do, but it's also the most rewarding. Yeah, I want to talk to you about the, the four-week strike sugar challenge a little later. <laughs> but before, I, it remind me of my friend. I want to ask you about juices because I have mm -hmm. this friend and he, he's, he doesn't drink alcohol. So every time we go out like uh, on a social occasion, mm. he asks for juices. So he's drinking like four glass, five glass yeah. of orange juice on a, on a seat. You know? So I was, I was talking to him about how much sugar there is on a glass of orange juice. And a lot of people think juice is healthy, right? Yep. It's, it, it, it can be but not like that. And yeah. if you were to sit down and drink one glass of orange juice, there would be at least the juice of three to four oranges in it. Now, when would we ever sit down and eat three or four, four whole oranges in one sitting? You just wouldn't do it because eating yeah. a piece of fruit is very different. It has all the fiber and the nutrients and the whole package there. So you get full fast, but from juice, you're just basically shooting. You might as well have the alcohol because it's the same amount of sugar ultimately. And um, the, the problem is that it will really upset 
the, the pancreas, the organs of blood sugar handling, it still has to do a massive job of cleaning up all that sugar. So yeah. juice isn't the answer. And people are always shocked when I tell them how, you know, what a poor choice fruit juice really is. Um, better drink water. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we work yeah, also definitely. on changing that habit. Not easy, mm -hmm. but. <laughs> yeah, that's the, I think that's the big, you know, like the mm -hmm. mental game. That's uh, something really important that I also work a lot with on the, the psychology of eating. I think it's essential to change habits. Yeah, like it's, I said, it's bringing the awareness. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So let's talk about breakfast. That's one of the questions that I get all the <laughs> time. Oh, what, what do you get? What do you get for breakfast? What should I be eating? And you have something on the website also, the best way to break the fast, not like the breakfast, but to break the fast. Right? That's right. <laughs> well, uh, br breakfast is, is a critical meal, and it has been proven through science that those people who break the fast have breakfast every morning mm. tend to be, on average, 50% leaner than their non-breakfast eating counterparts. So you need to start the day and basically fan the flame, the pilot light, put the fuel in your gas tank to start all the metabolic processes up again. And uh, that is one of the principles of eating clean is I insist that we learn how to eat breakfast, even if it is only to drink it in a smoothie. I'm not saying a smoothie is the be all end all answer, but it is a way for people who are hesitant to uh, eat breakfast. It's a way to, for, to get them started. But I have lots mm -hmm. of wonderful breakfast ideas. Um, we, I make a lot of uh, chia seed pudding uh, with my own homemade nut milk. And I chop avocado or fig or fresh fruit over that, uh, a mm -hmm. little drizzle of maple syrup. And it, it's a beautiful way to start your day. Um, eggs, I love to make um, whole organic eggs. I fry them, uh, you know, saute them easy over however you want it and put them on a bed of greens. And that's a beautiful breakfast. Or you can have even leftovers from the night before. There's so many ways to go, but you, you've got to start. the day. Like I look at every meal, Bruno, as an opportunity to put nutrients into my body. And I'm not going to skip the breakfast one because it's the critical piece. It's the most essential meal. Mm -hmm. Do you have a time after waking up or you just follow more like your body when, when you start feeling hungry, then you go and you have also if a client, you see the difference between timing for breakfast? So I uh, will wake up in the morning kind of naturally on my own around 6.37. And the first thing I do is I drink about a half a liter to a liter of water. Mm -hmm. uh, just to get everything moving, if you know what I mean. And then yeah. I will make my way over to the kitchen and have my breakfast pretty soon after that. And I like to time it so that, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes later, I can get into the gym and get my workout done because I fueled myself. I'm ready to go. The food has digested somewhat. And, um, that gives me the most optimal energy to do a good workout or, you know, to go to work and perform. Mm -hmm. Got you. Reading labels, that's something that we all have to learn nowadays because <laughs> they, they, it's tricky. You mm -hmm. go to the supermarket and there is so many products, so many options, yeah. and the marketers are like, oh my God, they're amazing. They, they, the front of the package is always good, right? But then you go back to the on the back end of the package and then you start to read the ingredients. Danger, yeah. How, yeah. How do you go about that? Uh, well, you know, it, it's challenging for us to stay ahead of the game because uh, in North America, there are 6,000 new food items introduced every year, which is a lot. So to stay ahead of the game is, is quite a bit of work for you and I. And so I walk into the grocery store very skeptical. You know, I don't assume that everything that I see in there is food because most of it isn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. And I try to keep my purchases to items that have a minimal number of ingredients. So clearly, you're going to find a lot of those in the produce aisle where your fruits and vegetables live. And then when you do get into the package stuff, you've got to put your glasses on and look at the label and be aware that uh, you know the first ingredient you read most often is the one that's in that product to the highest degree. If it's sugar or some form of sugar then right away, it's likely not an ideal food for you. So forget it. And if there are lots of preservatives and lots of words you can't pronounce because they're all chemicals, don't eat that either. So, you know, nutrient-dense, clean, whole, 
well-sourced foods are a great place to begin. Um, yeah, and that sense, helps. It helps. It's still it's still hard because and, and another one to watch out for is is the the um, you know the hundred calorie packs or the fat oh, free yeah. or the reduced fat reduced sugar food options. Forget about it. Put it down. Those foods are actually contributing to the overweight and obesity crisis because we are trusting that the package is telling the truth when it isn't. Hey guys, what's up? Bruno Gama here, Brazilian Health Nut. And let's take a little break from the show because I would like to offer you something. If you go to my website, www.brazilianhealthnut.com and click on the page Burn Fat Forever, you can go ahead and claim your free consultation with me right now, okay? Or you can just send me an email at brazilianhealthnut at gmail.com. So you can start to lose weight and feel healthier right now, okay? So go ahead and claim your free consultation with me and remember that spots are limited, okay? Now let's get back to the show. Let's talk about carbohydrates. There is a lot of talk about this word nowadays on the media. I know it's bad, you should yeah. cut or what's your take? Do, do, because the way I see, I see as there is good carbohydrates and there is bad yeah. carbohydrates so i try to put them on a classification yeah. and then try to eat as much as i can from the good ones and avoid as much as i can from the bad ones how do you see carbohydrates uh, well <laughs> it's a big talk. yeah uh, personally i can't function very well at all without carbohydrate but i'm very specific about the carbohydrate that i eat well what is that um my formula is in my day i will eat about 30 percent fat 30% protein, and then 40% complex carbohydrate. But I get of that 40%, 20% of my complex carbs come from leafy greens. So a lot of, oh, yeah. a lot of um, you know, kale, spinach, lettuces, bitter lettuces, arugula, uh, watercress, mm -hmm. herbs, etc. And then that final 20% of complex carbohydrate um, is from grains, although I don't eat a lot of grains, and, and some fruit. And I find that mm. that really helps give you a visual of what should be on your plate and over the course of the day what you should consume. Um, and for me, I, I try to have greens at every meal. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'll have greens at breakfast, greens in my smoothie, greens at lunch, greens for my mid-afternoon snack, and greens at dinner again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awesome. Mm. That's amazing. Tosca, there is one question also that I get all the time, and they, they ask for the one thing, you know, like, oh, Bruno, tell me one thing. Uh -huh. And they get, they get surprised by my answer all the time. And they, they, they ask, right, oh, tell me one thing. I always say, learn how to cook. Uh -huh. So that's my, yeah. that's my best, always my best advice. You know? yeah. Start to learn how to cook. I think that's amazing. I left home when I was about 21 to go to the big city of Sao Paulo. I'm from a small island here in south of Brazil to start model actually in Sao Paulo. And then I went to New York. And so I had to learn everything yeah. on my own. Before, I, you know, I didn't do anything at all. My mom used to do everything yeah. to myself. And then I started to learn to cook, even though I was doing the wrong things because I didn't learn anything about nutrition. Mm. But I started. And yeah. then after, with the right information, I just changed the ingredients and started cooking everything, right? So what's the importance about cooking? Well, I think that's a skill, a life skill that every child should be taught um, from, you know, by the time you're 16, 17, 18 years of age, I feel the obligation uh, on, on the parents' part for children is to teach them how to cook at least five or six things that they are very confident in preparing that will help them go out into the big world and do as you did. And by the way, I commend that what you did because that must not have been easy at all. But, and, and you are, if I may say a very handsome young man. Uh, uh, thanks. <laughs> um, so first of all, good on you for learning how to cook. Secondly, the critical piece about cooking is that it is the way to get clean nutrition into you when you know how to do it. And you don't need to be a chef. Cooking is pretty easy. I mean, you can assemble things, you can steam things, you can quickly fry or saute things, and you can feed yourself. It's cheaper. You put your hands on the more nutrient-dense ingredients, the foods you need to survive and be well, and you can help manage your weight better. 
relying on processed manufactured foods will surely get you into trouble. No, oh, yeah. Yeah, my plates and my meals always look different because I always <laughs> add something different. I'm always like, and even I'm not a good cook, but it's always no. different. It's so weird. Like every time I, I eat a different flavor, it's crazy. And, it's, and it's, by those flavors, we, are, we, we experience it in our mouth as flavor, but in the body, that translates to nutrition. Uh, mm. it, it helps to support our, our thyroid. It helps to support our hormones. You know, the fats keep our brains functioning well. Um, turmeric, spices, for example, help to support the immune system, help to turn on genetic function. So... We putting those beautiful and varied flavors onto our plates and into our food is is one surefire way to strengthen the body. Yeah. So yesterday I I live on an island here in the south of Brazil and there is a little tiny island in front of my beach the where the place where I live. Yeah. And I went with some friends we went kayaking there to this small little island and I was there by myself and I was just wondering a little bit about life and I was like, why? Nobody teaches these kind of things when we are kids, like in school. Why we learn about math, biology, and all the subjects, but nobody, I, I, at least in Brazil, I don't know how it is in Canada, but nobody says anything about nutrition. Right. It's crazy. So we, we used to get that education. Um, I remember, and I'm a little bit older than you, I think, Bruno. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> don't look like. <laughs> but um, I remember <laughs> learning those things in school. You're very sweet. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, and but uh, you know the education systems here in North America, in their infinite wisdom, I'm using air quotes, um, decided, oh no, that's not important to learn. Then we became uh, latchkey kids, where both parents were working, so children were having to fend for themselves, meaning that they would have to have access to pre-prepared foods at home because that's what parents were doing. And you know, so the, so they were garbage packaged foods were appearing in the grocery stores, appearing in the lunch boxes, and appearing at home. And this is what we thought was food. So people didn't really have to learn how to cook. So I'm trying to change that revolution. I'm trying to change that way of thinking, teaching about eating clean and changing how North Americans eat one mouthful at a time. Um, because it, it, it's a life skill. It's, it's as important as learning how to drive, learning how to swim up here in Canada, learning how to skate. It's a life skill. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah, I think it has to start from us. Like, if you wait for the government, I think we are no, lost. At, too late. At least in Brazil, oh my God, it's like crazy here. Yeah. Every time I come back here, it's worse and worse. Like the last, I was reading about diabetes, and in Brazil, mm. the country ha that has more increased is here on the last mm. ten years. Not even the USA. Not no, no. It's frightening. People think, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. There was a prediction by the World Health Organization that by the year 2035 one in two people will be overweight or obese. Well, we're already close to that because I think we're at 70%, but that, but that they will be struggling with issues like um, uh, diabetes. Chron chron like diabetes. chronic disease. Yeah, yeah. exactly, and, and cancer. And, and cancer will be like a tidal wave hitting nations all across the globe. We will never be able to support this kind of disease with our healthcare systems the way they are now. So we have to take our health back. We must do this. I, I have coined a phrase, healthcare, or sorry, self-care mm -hmm. is the new healthcare. We should not mm -hmm. wait for the government or the medical systems to heal us. We need to heal ourselves. We need to be proactive and do that now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That brings us to the main subject about <laughs> what I want to talk to you today, which is sugar. You know, uh, there was a, also uh, an article on your website called Sugar, the legal cocaine. Mm. That's really strong. Yes, it <laughs> Tell is. Tell about sugar. Well, my feeling about sugar is that, first of all, it is not a food. It is an ingredient. And in fact, it's more like a drug. And the reason I say that, sugar is like heroin and cocaine, but more dangerous. Why? Because heroin and cocaine and sugar are white, crystalline, refined powders that came from a plant. When we do heroin and cocaine, and I've never done it, so I don't know, but I'm told, you know, you get the high, you, you feel amazing, you get this wonderful rush of energy, and then you crash. 
And then you want more, so the addiction begins. And it's the same with sugar. We take the sugar, we get this amazing high, we get a rush, we get this energy, we feel euphoric and good, and then we crash, and then we want more. The problem is we know that heroin and cocaine are drugs. It's pretty obvious. We don't know that sugar is a drug. It's not labeled like that, and sugar is everywhere. I told you, it's in, it's in cigarettes. I don't smoke, but four teaspoons mm. of sugar in cigarette. It's alcohol. It's candy. It's cereal. It's even in things that you don't imagine. Sugar is in salt. Sugar is in drugs. Sugar is in everything because manufacturers have realized that we humans have a natural desire to eat sweet. So yeah. this is yeah. why I, I compare sugar to those dangerous drugs. They are lethal. And I don't think there's any one single ingredient that has destroyed the uh, wellness or the, or the welfare of mankind more than sugar, even if you take it back all the way to when we were introducing sugar into North America and into the Caribbean with slavery and, and then the results of, of that and, and sugar with respect to disease and with the way that we are now experiencing can- cancers and things that never used to, we never used to see them until people were 90 or, or older in life. Now we're seeing them in babies and mm-hmm. sugar is the preferred food of cancer. We, there's no denying it. And now there are ties between obesity and cancers. And sugar, yeah. sugar to a large part is to blame. In fact, recently the American Health Association, American Heart Association came out and said, oh, whoops, we're sorry. The, we were wrong about the fat being responsible for the high cholesterol in blood. It was really sugar all along. Well, mm. my God, We've done a massive disservice to ourselves believing in those falsities. So sugar, yeah. sugar is the thing. We need to nail that yeah. one down. This reminds me of an amazing book that I read. I, no, I'm not sure the name is Sugar, Fat, Salt, something like that. Yeah. Michael Moss, I think. It was amazing. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. What, the, the way they make food, just like engineer it mm-hmm. to make it taste perfectly, like on the sweet spot, is crazy. Yeah, like, they're trying to seduce you. This, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. So do you think is sugar addictive can be considered addictive? Absolutely. Uh, I, yeah. I think that's proven out when we do when we do the strike sugar program. I do it with my clients or or people can join into the challenge that I'm running right now because they will go through withdrawal symptoms and the withdrawal symptoms includes headaches, shaking, irritability, mood swings, uh dry mouth, all the things that are associated also with uh, withdrawal symptoms of getting off of drugs. Yeah. So yeah. without a doubt, it is a powerfully addicting substance. Yeah. So Tosca, t- tell us a, a little bit about the four-week program that you have, a little <laughs> more in depth. So it, the four-week about. program is a, a structure that I built um, to help people kick the sugar habit. Why I did four weeks is because a three or a five day cleanse just doesn't do it. Every organ in the body that processes sugar, so pancreas, adrenals, liver, etc., needs four weeks to fully detox itself from the effects of sugar. And so I have built a four week menu plan with recipes exercise, supplementation, science, motivation, journaling that helps people kick the habit. And um, we have a, it's a very strong private Facebook group for the Strike Sugar Challengers who have an opportunity to share their experience online. The group is very robust. There are thousands of people there. And the success stories range anywhere from people who were previously unable to become pregnant to now being pregnant, uh, wow. substantial weight loss, increased libido. It's very important as a, as a human being yeah. to express yourself sexually. And, and libido, libido is dropping, but amongst oh, those yeah. who strike sugar, that's not a problem. Um, people are able to get off of or reduce their diabetes medications. Remember, lifestyle diabetes type 2 is a lifestyle disease. We brought it on by sugar. We can get rid of it by kicking sugar. It's not a life sentence. Um, And even Alzheimer's and dementia, uh, people are saying that is diabetes type 3 because it's it's an inability to process sugar. People will tell me from striking sugar that their mental clarity increases. Their skin improves. They no longer have breakouts. Uh, They smell better. 
they taste better if I can be naughty. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> they, <laughs> um, they, it, the skin and hair, the nails become stronger. The hair stops falling out and becomes more uh, radiant. Uh, the eyes sparkle. The brain is on fire. You know, we 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 think clearly. Yeah. We speak clearly. We feel better. We lose our aches and pains in our joints and lower back. It's amazing the things that happen just by getting rid of this dangerous ingredient called sugar. Yeah, there is so many benefits. Not mm. just weight loss. It's like your whole life is going to change. Yeah. You're going to be on the next level because. Yeah. I remember I've been always healthy, quotation mark. Yeah. <laughs> but w- when I started on my journey, like five years ago, when I started to change the things I was eating, the change, yeah. changing the way I was exercising, all those things, uh, my my health got to a next level that I could never imagine before. You know, I have like energy from the morning to the yeah. evening. I I sleep like a baby every night. I haven't been sick for over three three yeah. years now, I guess. Yeah. Not even like a flu. And it's crazy. Like I told you yesterday, I went to the island, like we kayaking there, we went back and forth. And then I came back home. I had lunch and then I went on another hike uh, on a, like on a mountain close to yeah. where I live. Yeah. Amazing. Like, and my brother was like, what did you go? Did you go to the hike even after yeah. going to the island? And he was like impressed. I was like, yeah, man, I, I had so much energy. It's, it's crazy. See, I think it's hard people, to tell people. Yeah, they, they don't realize that. And, and I have to say, having turned myself from that formerly obese person where I lost, gosh, how many pounds, 80 pounds, um, to becoming, you know, a person who eats clean and, and just feeling so much better away from the sugar. I have energy all day long. I can outlast people that are 20 years old because, and I'm, I'm in my fifties. Uh, you know, Mm -hmm. I, I, I am shocked how much energy I have. And I, I am certain it's because that sugar no longer numbs me. Uh, and I think sugar does do that. It puts you in a funk, a cloud, you, you're numb, you're tuned out. You're just really not at the, operating at your highest energy level. Yeah. Do you have a, like a list of foods to stabilize blood sugar? Do you have like a mm. favorite ones that yes. you like to share? Well, yes. So so the, the one of the biggest ones actually is protein. We don't want to overdo protein. But mm-hmm. uh, when, when someone is having a hypoglycemic event, in other words, when blood sugar is low, the first thing they want to do is throw something sweet at you. Hurry, let's get the blood sugar levels up. But what the body really needs is protein. And for me, because I was, if you will, pre-diabetic, when I was overweight and before I started to make these big changes, the biggest change I noticed was that by keeping protein levels steady in my blood every three hours through eating clean, uh, I no longer had had the hypoglycemic events. In fact, I cured myself of hypoglycemia and I, I have no issues whatsoever with my blood sugar. So it, to me, it's always protein. You know, have a boiled egg, have some chickpeas, have some hummus and, and raw vegetables, have a piece of grilled mm-hmm. fish, a piece of grilled chicken. Um, and that to, that is the biggest answer. And we need to pair, of course, our proteins with some complex carbs and some healthy fat. I think healthy yeah. fat is another big answer. When we eat enough fat, fat is such a satiating macronutrient. It, it fills us. It, it, it um, sort of it dampens the desire for more because we get satisfied very quickly with fat. So when we add mm-hmm. fat to the mix, now we're really talking. Now we're saying, yeah, the body is nourished and fed. I don't want any more. How can you overeat chicken breasts? You can't. I mean, can you eat more than three or four in a row? I can't. Um, hmm. Because these foods are, are highly satisfying, highly nutritious. Yeah. So, the only time when I can overeat protein is when I go to a barbecue here in Brazil. <laughs> oh, I, have to, I have to come try that out. <laughs> yeah, they have this barbecue where they keep bringing meat. And it's like all on your face, like just back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> so <laughs> there is no way you cannot overeat. But then, like you said, you cannot do this all the time. I go once yeah. a month and I'm good for that, you know, because it's you, feel, you don't feel really good after having so much protein like that. <laughs> do you do you have any replacements for sugar that you recommend or you just go like a no sugar at all, nothing? Well, for me, uh, because that's the kind of person I am, I went cold turkey, but I know a lot of people need help. And uh, my preference is, and I do put a list of um, sugar and its disguises, because there are about 100 different variations of sugar, and then the alternatives that I prefer. So the what to eat for sugar and the what not to eat, that is in the Strike Sugar program. So I, I prefer 
um, my clients to use maple syrup or honey. Okay. Used to be that um, we had, um, oh, why can't I think of it now, from the yucca plant. Um, oh. Uh, it's escaping me. Anyway, it's highly processed now. Agave, right, uh, is is highly processed now, so I don't even recommend that. Um, We can use coconut sugar, but I also like to suggest that we use dried fruit fruit purees as a way of cooking. I like, I make a date paste. So I just basically put whole dates in a pan as long as the pits are out of it. And I put a little lemon juice in there and I make it into a paste. And that's a beautiful alternative for uh, baking and cooking actually. So that's, Mm -hmm. that's one I use quite a bit, but I also use pureed carrots or pureed sweet potatoes, um, applesauce, apple butter, uh, these things are all wonderfully sweet, and they satisfy my need for sugar, which is no longer where it used to be, because I really was a sugar addict before, but yeah. not, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Yeah, yeah back, in the day, back in the days, I remember I used to, li- to like ste- stevia, stevia right. I don't know how right. people say. And, but now, like, I don't even have don't to have it. that anymore, because fruits, it's already so sweet because your taste bud changed mm-hmm. so much yep. as you keep eating real foods yes. that you don't even eat anymore. So, and I yeah. find stevia to be overly sweet, and also it, mm-hmm. too, has been processed now beyond recognition. So where it used to have really good qualities as far as being a sugar alternative, I find now it has a, a very a strong aftertaste, a metallic aftertaste, and the processing just turns me off. I don't want to eat that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tosca, is there anything else that you'd like to share uh, <laughs> regarding weight loss or health in general that we didn't cover today? Yeah, we have to talk about chocolate, don't we? <laughs> oh, let's talk chocolate then. <laughs> well, it's interesting because chocolate, as we know it, is definitely off of the, the list as far as a clean food. However, that is if we choose different chocolate, if we choose raw, dark cacao, and it's unprocessed and hasn't had a lot of sugar and additives added to it, this can be a real proper food. And I think in your culture, doesn't chocolate mm-hmm. play a yeah. very important role? Oh, yeah. Here in Brazil, yes. it's uh, a lot of people eat chocolate because we have big productions of cacao in the north of Brazil like for years, de- yes. decades. You know? So yes. it's very famous. So, so to know that you can eat chocolate and eat it in moderation but choose chocolate that is of 70% or darker. And yeah, that, real chocolate. <laughs> that's correct. Then you're actually putting nutrients in your body, particularly minerals. And we are, uh, as, a, as a planet, actually highly demineralized. So I look mm. at, at, at chocolate in moderation as an opportunity to put minerals in us <laughs> but um, mm-hmm. you know in general yeah, magnesium especially yes yes particularly mm-hmm. but in general yeah. you know uh, it's never too late I didn't be- begin my physique renovation until I was 40 mm-hmm. and I've had not only the best physique of my life but the best health of my life in these last two two decades and it's never too late. You know, my body, I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm aging well. My body functions well. It's strong. I can run, jump, play, make love, swim, kayak, hike. I can do all those things. I feel good. I'm out from under the grip of sugar and uh, depression and all the things that go with it. And I really would love for people to discover what eating clean is all about and find their true birthright, which is optimal health. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's an amazing message. And last question for you. So people are super motivated now after yeah. here, uh, here we're talking. So if you have to give one action step after doing listening to this interview, <laughs> what would that be? Don't hesitate. Get started somewhere. You know, follow that's... follow Bruno, follow follow me, Tosca Reno. Uh, follow someone you admire and get started. Don't wait for tomorrow because right now you're on fire with determination. You need to seize that moment and... Do this every time I do this with my clients. Get a piece of paper, get a cl- uh, get an index card, uh, make a note to yourself somewhere in big letters. I want to lose weight. I want to lose ten pounds, and I want to do this because I want to. And whatever your reason is, put your reasons down. You've you've got to name your why, and when yeah. you can write it down and carry the message with you, you're fifty percent more likely to have success. But you've got to be specific. You can. I wrote a blog about it yesterday. You can find it on toscarino.com. It'll tell you what to do. But you got to name it. You got to call it. You got to own it. 
Yeah, that's so true. Every client that works with me, they have to go through this. They have to do like a 51 answer why you want to get healthy. <laughs> so you, you have to go really deep because you yeah. cannot just go, oh, I want to lose weight because I want to have a six pack. And that's just one right. reason. You have to give me 51 reasons. Oh, wow, Bruno, <laughs> yeah. you make it tough. That's good. We're yeah, on the same you gotta page. Be, <laughs> yeah, you got to really dig deep. Otherwise, we don't... Uh, I, access you don't have access to yep. long-term results and that's why i call it burn fat forever like my slogan like a really yep. forever you know that's why i, I want to help people to achieve yeah you do it so, once and you don't have to do it again because now you know how to do it for yeah. life yeah that's awesome so where can people find you and what's next for you all right so you can find me on toscareno.com and what's next for me is I'm building clean living experience retreats. So we're, we're building uh, four and five day retreat experiences where you can learn how to do exactly what, what we're talking about, clean living, eating clean with me personally. Um, I'm also going to be, uh, we're filming a TV show in April down in the United States. So that'll be coming out on uh, public television and uh, more, more new programs. We've got the spring cleanse coming out once the winter weather lifts. Uh, mm. I'm always busy. You can always <laughs> find me somewhere doing something. That's amazing. Where are you guys filming? Uh, Ormond Beach, Florida. Oh, in Florida? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I thought it was going to be in New York. I'm going to be in New York. I'd like to see you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, we'll have to get together. <laughs> yes. Um, thank you so much. That was awesome. I really learned a lot from you and I super appreciate yeah. your time. And I hope to you. see you soon. Thank Talk you, Bruno. You soon. Happy New Year. All the best and eat clean, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Brazilian Health Nut Show. Go to www.brazilianhealthnut.com for much more information about how to burn fat for the rest of your life. Hasta luego. 